five important things that you should consider when picking a monitor. Guys, uh, awesome for tuning in. Uh, I have collected five things that I think or I, that I know are important when picking a monitor and I'm going to walk you through these and then you can consider them as well and that will be quite useful. So first up, I have a sample display here that I'm going to sort of review today, but instead of just doing the review, I'm going to contrast them against previous displays that I reviewed. And the uh, first thing that we're going to consider is curved versus non-curved. Obviously, curved, benef uh, curved monitors have some benefits and the normal flat ones have some benefits. So we're going to look at those two types. So the uh, first consideration that I give you is curved versus non-curved. Then up next, we have obviously the aspect ratio. Usually displays have the 16 by nine. So that's something you can consider. And alternatively, there is a big trend towards these 21 by nine. And yeah, obviously 21 by nine has a much bigger screen real estate. So that can be useful if you want to do certain types of work. And uh, so we have curved versus non-curved. We have the aspect ratio 21 by nine versus 16 by nine. And then third, let's quickly have a look on my list is obviously the resolution. As you may know, there are a, a full HD, uh, WQHD, 2K, 4K, so different resolutions can give you a different pixel density and a different degree of sharpness. So that's also something I'm going to compare because obviously, yes, you can pick a high resolution display, but uh, they are not only pricier, but maybe there's some, there can be some disadvantages for some people using a higher resolution display. And then point number four, obviously, is the connectors uh, that the monitors, the displays offer you. Uh, usually the most common is HDMI or DisplayPort, but increasingly we also see the USB-C connectors, and that can be especially useful, as I'm going to show you in my case with this monitor, if you want to connect a MacBook Pro, for example, because if your monitor only has, let's say, HDMI and DisplayPort, you uh, you don't using this, so that's kind of uh, important to consider if you have a device like this, like the new MacBook Pro, that uh, your display has the appropriate input. That can be very beneficial because you can uh, connect just one cable and you're all set. The display uh, is charging the MacBook Pro. You get the display signal. I think you can also use it uh, as a USB hub. So that's why I have the uh, fancy 4K monitor from LG today as a reference. You see it says Thunderbolt 3. And uh, yeah, also you say it's an HDR monitor. So that can also be a good, interesting thing to consider because what's 0.5? Uh, maybe you think, oh, he has uh, told me everything, but no, 0.5 are the color profiles. And obviously, if you want to do some creative work, the color profiles are important. Uh, let's look over here. You have sRGB, Adobe RGB, Rec 709, and I think the other one is called BT2020. So you have a bunch of, and I, I think there's also DCI P3. I hope I pronounced this right, but you see it in the side card. So there are different color profiles and depending on what kind of work you want to do, that can also be important. And so I'm going to walk you through some examples uh, of monitors I have tested in the past and we're going to compare, okay, what color profiles do these monitors offer and what can you consider? Is that even important for you or maybe not as important for you? So without further ado, this concludes the introductory part. Usually, I would do an unboxing, but I think I'm going to skip that today because otherwise the video is probably going to get too long. I want to keep it, uh, get a little bit shorter with my videos and be a little bit more concise. So uh, instead, I'm just going to show you what's in the accessory package. Uh, so you, they have, have made some changes with this LG monitor. Uh, usually you always used to have like this big power brick, which was a little bit unsightly. And now with, at least with this display, you can uh, plug the power cord right into the back. So the power supply is inside the display. That's a little bit of a change from the LG displays that I tested before. And also this uh, monitor got a brightness sensor. So we're going to test and see how well does it adjust the brightness. Usually it's nice to have that if the monitor senses the light in your environment and adjusts the brightness accordingly. But obviously from my testing, it doesn't work that well with all the monitors. 
So sometimes you have to switch it off and do it manually. Uh, and that's what we're also going to compare. Without digressing any further, I have given you an introduction. So let's just get rolling and uh, compare these five important things that you can consider if you want to when picking a monitor. Let's get rolling. So first things I did, I just took the display out of the box. Uh, fairly easy to do. Um, some ASO displays, the monitor stand is already uh, assembled and the ASO displays also have this nice carrying handle. You can overlay a shot here. So I, that's something I, for example, like about the ASOs, the carrying handle and usually the already attached uh, monitor uh, stand. With the LG, you just uh, took this bottom, bottom part, you attach it there and that just clips into place. I can show this to you in a second. What you want to be careful with, obviously if you put it on the uh, bottom part, there's this uh, controller where you control all the functions. So you don't want to damage that. That usually stands out a little bit. So be super careful here. And otherwise, obviously if it's a curved display, this one obviously is flat. So it's very easy to just put it down. Uh, I think there's also a piece of styrofoam in, in, in the box when you take it out. You can put that below, but obviously if it's curved, you have to be careful on the edges. I remember the curved display had some curved styrofoam. So in the case of the curved display, use the included styrofoam just to be safe. So let me quickly put this on and then we can go and do the comparisons. And the mechanism for the LG is surprisingly simple. You just uh, put that on here. Uh, fasten that screw and you're ready to go to just uh, cl clip that in to the display. And yeah, once the monitor arm is ready, uh, you see there's some uh, mechanism where you can uh, lock and unlock this. So just put it into place, push it down gently and it snaps into place. And yeah, you're ready to go. Uh, only thing that you might want to consider is obviously here is the Thunderbolt. Display port and HDMI. The higher resolution of a display you have, obviously the more data these cables should carry. And I can show this to you here in the side card. Uh, obviously the Thunderbolt carries the most. Uh, display port uh, will be fine as well. HDMI, you have to be a little bit careful. If it's really a display that has a lot of pixels, then in some cases the HDMI may not be enough. Otherwise, display port and Thunderbolt, you should be fine. And uh, yeah, also there's a lot of displays, monitors, they come with a, uh, additional software. And let's say I'm using this uh, 4K LG display with display port on my Mac, then I may also want to connect a additional USB cable so that I can uh, maybe update the firmware of the display or control the functions of the monitor, like color profiles and stuff like that, directly with the LG software via USB. I know uh, ASO also has a color management software, if I, I'm not mistaken. And yeah, the interesting part is gonna be, can I also use the Thunderbolt uh, cable, for example, to control the display of the software? So that's be interesting to test, but right now let's quickly look at the accessory box, what kind of cables are included, and then we get rolling with these five comparisons. Excellent, now you know how to connect the display stand for an LG monitor. And let's quickly have a look at the accessory box. Like I told you in the beginning, what they changed with this particular 4K display is they included the power supply into the display itself. So you only get the power cord. That was the difference before I can overlay the shot uh, where you can see the power break. That was much, much bigger. And uh, yeah, I think it's nice if the power supply is integrated into the display. If you're connecting a display directly to your computer, yes, you probably want to make sure you're using the display port cable. So make sure that your computer has display port uh, so that you can tap into the full resolution. And what I also going to test, like I told you, I want to test this Thunderbolt 3 connector with the monitor because obviously so far I only have used the internal display of the MacBook Pro and I want to see how well the 2019 MacBook Pro works together with that LG display. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, I can even use the monitor as a USB hub, USB cables also included. And I also noticed that LG has some display software that you can install to configure and run some settings on a monitor, which can also be quite handy. Guys, I don't want to draw this out too long. Let's jump uh, to the next part now. Very good, we jump to part 3A. And let me quickly uh, show you or talk about curved versus non-curved. Obviously this is the flat 4K version. It's also something I noticed if you want a curved display, they may not be available in 4K or be very pricey. So 
these uh, 21 by 9 flat ones, they are more easily available in 4K. Let me quickly open up the video software. And here's my video library and a project that I work on. And yeah, in the past, as you can see here, this is an old picture that I took when I was testing the curved version. I think the curved displays are most suited, for example, if you're a gamer. For a gamer, it's really nice because it's curved, it's very immersive. And if you're a creative professional, I would say it's probably a matter of taste. Like I told you a second ago, the curved ones, if you need a 4K curved, you gotta pay a little bit of attention. This one that I tested here, I mean, you see the screenshot, that, that was, uh, I think, a lower resolution. And uh, this one that I'm currently using that you're seeing here in the picture, that's actually 4K. And yeah, I mean, you have this big timeline and you can move to the timeline and explain stuff and edit very comfortably just because this monitor gives you so much space. But if you were to do the same thing on a curved display, I noticed when you uh, move the timeline around, in a curved display, it's it's a, it's a weird effect because there's a curve in there. So that maybe is not something that everybody likes. Personally, for me, both are okay. So let me quickly touch up on point 3B, the aspect ratio, as you can see here, that's the 21 by nine, and that's the classical 16 by nine uh, from ASO. And both monitors have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, this is a 27 inch that gives you approximately the same height uh, when using the 16 by 9 aspect ratio and as you can see here basically the 21 by 9 gives you some extra space here and some extra space here and that's uh, particularly good for let's say if you want to do gaming or video editing or maybe if, uh, picture editing so that you just have a more workspace or maybe you do maybe you do a lot of accounting then maybe you can have one document here and then enter some accounting entries there so that would be the usual benefits for someone using a 21 by 9. quickly moving on to resolution uh, obviously, that's not the resolution that the display has. It's not 2560 times uh, 1080. The resolution is actually higher. Uh, it should be double than that. But the display if effectively scales it down because if it would run at the full resolution, everything would be very, very tiny. So the scaling basically gives you the full resolution but makes the symbols better while also retaining the sharpness. So that's something I really noticed with these 4K displays. Everything is super, super sharp. Much, much sharper in the symbols and in the text than you would ever find on a full HD, or in this case, I think you call it WQHD. So usually a lot of 27 inch monitors, they are WQHD, although they are also 4K ones. This ASO is, uh, still the lower resolution and if you have the smaller 24 inch ones they are usually also 16 by 9 and uh, just have full HD so my thinking is if you're just consuming content our uh, full HD is or WQHD is uh, still nice for a lot of people uh, even if the display is a little bit smaller let's say a standard 24 inch one but as soon as you start to do creative work like you need a lot of workspace accounting video editing then it really makes, uh, can, can give you benefits. Even this 27 inch, it gives me a little bit more space at the side and at the bottom. And that's really very, imp very noticeably Im improving the workflow when I do video editing on both of these monitors. Moving on to part 3D connectivity. That's also something you can consider because not every monitor gives you the same connectivity options. What I noticed, if you, for example, a lot of people like to use these MacBooks, MacBook Pros, then you really want to make sure that you have this uh, USB-C or I should better say Thunderbolt connector because that way you can plug in your MacBook Pro and use the system right away. Personally, I have both. I still have this really, really old Mac Pro, the tower one, uh, connected via a DisplayPort cable to the LG. And if I compared it to the ASO. With the ASO, you may want to pay attention because while the ASOs are made in <laughs> made in Japan instead of South Korea, they have different models. So this one has a display port, has the HDMI and even the DVI, but because it's an older generation, it doesn't have the Thunderbolt USB-C type connector. So that's why uh, regardless which display or manufacturer you pick, uh, I know in the case of the ASO, obviously they also have the other connectors that you can use with the MacBook Pro, the modern ones, but usually they charge a slight premium 
with LG that's already included. But uh, as a rule of thumb, I like the Japanese build quality a little bit more. It's just my preference. And then lastly, we jump to part 3E. That's something that people also uh, often tend to miss, at least if they are new to be being a little bit more professional with the displays, is the color profiles. So let me quickly open up the settings menu for you here. Move this a little bit to the side. So you can choose different profiles, not only varies based on the manufacturer at the product line, so also on the individual model. So let me quickly go in here. So you see, those are a bunch of profiles that are in here. In, uh, in this case, the LG is a HDR monitor with a higher bit rate. So for example, it supports this DCI P3. So if you have never he heard about that, um, that's not, not so much of a problem, but it's something I really would recommend if you have a little bit of time, look into before choosing a monitor, what color profiles the monitor offer. I know the ASO usually has the custom profiles and the sRGB as long as you, for example, stay in the flex scan line. If you step it up to the color edge line with the ASO, you usually get a more advanced color profiles uh, and sometimes even a calibration sensor built into the monitor that uh, flaps down. In any case, if you have never heard about these color profiles, that's interesting to see. And uh, in all fairness, I can say for most people, if you're just consuming content, it might not, be, might not be that important unless you want to see HDR content. For a lot of people, these normal color profiles, the Rec. 709 or the sRGB are, do, is, are fine. But as soon as you start getting into content creation, maybe photography, video editing, and you want to do it a little bit more seriously, uh, all of a sudden you have to pay attention to these color profiles and you have to pay attention to uh, maybe one day you want to calibrate the monitor so that you have a certain degree of color accuracy. And guys, for testing purposes, I connected both my Mac Pro and the MacBook Pro via Thunderbolt. So let's quickly check and see what happens if I plug this in. Uh, like I told you, it's uh, really convenient because you have just one cable and you plug this in and you're ready to go. And the monitor detected it and asked me whether I want to switch over from DisplayPort to Thunderbolt. And uh, yeah, let's just quickly confirm this, yes. And as you can see, display turns off, turns on, and there you go, quickly connected. The LG display here via Thunderbolt as well. Obviously, if you need a little bit more space, you can just go over here and click more space. Then it changes the resolution. Obviously, the writing gets a little bit smaller. I like it on the default right here. Uh, that works well for me. So if I unplug the MacBook Pro, obviously, I have no connection to the monitor. So I have to go to the input settings and then switch over to the dis display port again. And now I... I'm not using the MacBook Pro anymore, but I'm using my normal Tower Mac Pro. So that concludes the test. Guys, uh, let's quickly jump to part four, the summary and conclusion. Guys, this concludes my short monitor guide video with an example of the LG 34WK95U, which is a, somewhat of a premium monitor because it's 21 by 9 4K with HDR. I walked you through five points in this uh, review slash tutorial and we considered first whether you should get a curved monitor or a flat monitor. Curved, I think, is great for gaming. For video editing, I think it's a matter of taste. Then the aspect ratio, I think 21 by 9, such as this LG monitor, is great if you need a lot of workspace because it gives you this extra space at the corners. And then as well, the size. I put uh, next to this monitor, my uh, ASO monitor. And the ASO monitor had this 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is also still great to work resolution wise. If you have a higher resolution, then uh, usually you can check how many pixels per inch you have and the higher that is the sharper your monitor can uh, display content. Uh, personally, I think as soon, uh, um, if you refer to the 16 by nine aspect ratio, if you have a 16 by nine, I probably wouldn't go bigger than 27 inch because I tested a 32 inch monitor once with a 16 by nine aspect ratio and I felt, wow, this is, uh, it looks very nice, but if you sit in front of it and you watch content, you're just too close. So my recommendation, don't exceed 27 inch unless you know that's right for you, which I think 27 inch is just the sweet spot. Uh, so 16 by nine, uh, whether it's 4K or not. Uh, let me quickly show you also the color profiles here. 
that's also something uh, I talked about. Color profiles can be important. For example, if you, like me, record YouTube videos and maybe you wanna produce HDR content with an external recorder, obviously then maybe this uh, Rec. 709, which most monitors, they support something like this with the sRGB and obviously HDR content needs an HDR monitor. So uh, maybe make sure that the monitor has, uh, I think a 10 bit input, then you should be fine with these other color profiles. Uh, as displayed here so far. So good, I really like this monitor, especially because you can connect the MacBook directly via the Thunderbolt cable. So that's kind of handy. One cable, you plug it in, the monitor works like a docking station. It charges your MacBook Pro, very, very handy and useful. Uh, have fun with your new gear. Uh, most of my viewers like to compare and you can compare and subscribe if you like right now as well. I see you in the next video, take care.